I've talked a lot about the contests that MTV held back in the 80s, and I've linked to a bunch of them down below in the description box. But today I want to talk about a contest I haven't covered before, and that was the time the network gave away John Bon Jovi's child at home to one lucky couple. Or at least they thought they were lucky. The contest would end up being more of a curse than a blessing, and today we're going to talk about the full story. In 1988, Bon Jovi was set to release their new album titled New Jersey. To promote the album, MTV and the record label wanted to do a contest that would somehow tie it to the name New Jersey. According to the New York Times, MTV initially thought about buying the house of John's guitar teacher in his hometown of Sayreville, New Jersey, and giving it to one lucky fan. An MTV spokesperson would go on to tell the Times that the network also had some other ideas to celebrate the release of New Jersey, revealing, we talked about giving away a bar, a piece of the boardwalk in Asbury Park, something tangible that would say New Jersey and would give some additional notoriety to the region, they'd say. It would be John Bon Jovi's younger brother, Matthew, who was still in high school at the time, who came up with the idea of MTV buying their family home that they were currently living in and giving it away to one lucky fan or family. The home was located in Sayreville, New Jersey on Robin Hood Drive and was part of Middlesex County, a borough of about 34,000 people. The idea seemed perfect given that John's parents wanted more privacy as they sometimes complained about the street in front of their house being clogged with fans when their son came to visit, and it got to the point that police had to be frequently called. John Bon Jovi would reveal that he lived with his parents in that very house during the making of the group's first three albums, telling NPR, the money wasn't that quick. The first two albums I'd lived at home, and it wasn't until the success of the third one, 1986, that I was able to even afford an apartment, let alone buy a house. That was the norm back then, according to The Rocker. And since it's hard to get a record deal and even harder to make money off of one, the other members also lived with their parents at the start of their music careers. After finally being able to move out of his family's home, John would move to Rumson, New Jersey and live a few blocks away from fellow New Jersey native Bruce Springsteen. In February of 1989, MTV would end up buying John Bon Jovi's child at home. While his parents and brother still lived there, the idea was for the family to live there until June of that year so Matthew could finish school. The network claimed to have paid fair market value for the home, and while they wouldn't give an exact figure, the New York Times would report that homes in the area were selling for around $300,000. Here's the promo that MTV ran for the contest. Hey, Tom. I heard that uh, you're giving your house away or something. Yeah, it? But it's winter time. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, this isn't just a house, man. It's the place where I grew up. Oh, I get it. You're giving away your parents' house. That's what right. are you going to do with your parents? That's my boyhood home, man. This is Sarahville, New Jersey. This is the place where I learned about the finer things in life, like rock and roll and women. Down in that basement of yours, I remember that. It's not Graceland, but this is our own little piece of New Jersey Bon Jovi-style rock and roll history. And I want you to have it. <laughs> You can win the house where John Bon Jovi grew up in MTV's Giving Away Bon Jovi's Home Contest. Just watch MTV March 28th when you see three Bon Jovi videos in a row and a message from John. Call the flashing 900 number to win. We'll fly one randomly chosen winner and friend to New Jersey so John himself can conduct a personal tour of the place and hand over the keys and deed to his Graceland. A two-story colonial in beautiful Sayreville with four bedrooms, two and a half baths, and pool. We'll also throw in 10000 bucks for property taxes, plus a Kawasaki Eliminator motorcycle for Bennett's off to party with the rest of the band when we fly you to Bon Jovi's next gig. Did you sure you want to go through with this? Oh, what the hell? I'll have other childhoods. Following the contest closing, the New York Times would write, and I quote, The Tuesday night contest caused jammed telephone lines in some areas as 800,000 callers tried to reach that number, with 192,000 calls coming during the first two minutes of the sweepstakes. An MTV spokesman would tell the Times, We blew out the phone circuits in Chicago and Newark. MTV would choose eight callers as finalists, and the network would hire an outside independent firm who asked for the finalist family information, and based on what was provided, they selected a winner. The winners would be a couple from Pennsylvania named Jay and Judy Frappier, and the Times would interview Mrs. Frappier, who said she tried to call the network 15 times before winning the contest. Here's some snippets of MTV covering the contest winners who got a tour of Bon Jovi's childhood home. Hi, I'm Judy Frappier. Hi, I'm Jay Frappier. We're the lucky winners of MTV's John Bon Jovi's house contest. Let's check out the house. Where's John? Come on inside. <laughs> hey, 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 hey
down. <laughs> so come on, let me show you around a little right bit. Then. The downstairs and got the bathrooms and all that stuff. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the kitchen. This is where uh, we would spend a lot of time in this house. And the spaghetti sauce is cooked here every week, you know, and you'd get up in the morning and trudge downstairs before you had to go to work or school. Or I'd come in three or four in the morning from playing. <laughs> Still, just it seems everybody would sit here. This was like the choice seat in the house. You know, sit right here. And uh, yeah, these yeah. people, and this is the rec room. That's all what right. we call the rec room. You were calling a TV room, but. Guys My house is a wreck. I want to know if this comes, this wall stays. You're gonna have to fight my father for these <laughs> records. I'm gonna for him. Yeah, but these are these are the ones that we gave to my family. So where are you guys from? From uh, Levittown, Levittown, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. How far is that from Philly? Uh, about 15 miles, 20 miles from Philly. So you're Sixers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Here you get the house. Here's the check, and I even get the sign. Ten grand. Oh, you better get at the duty. Yeah, it's here you go, Judy. I'm in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deed to the house. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Things would quickly turn sour afterwards, though. The frat beers would be interviewed by the New York Post almost 30 years after winning the contest, and even after Bon Jovi's family vacated the house, they still had to deal with fans of the rocker coming to the home. With Mrs. Frat Beer recalling to the New York Post, I would be washing dishes in the kitchen and through the window see a camera flash going off. On top of that, the prize money that the couple was awarded wasn't nearly enough to cover the taxes on all the prizes. She would tell the Post, the bill was in the $70,000 range. We had to decide what to do in a quickly distressed real estate market. It wasn't too long after the couple won the contest that they ended up selling the house and they would end up moving south to Texas where they still currently reside. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.